Amen. Amen. Hey, you know, <laughs> we, we, we just did the, uh, all the sessions uh, from Sunday uh, that I wanted to wrap up and then we'll move on to some other positive things we did Sunday. I didn't cover everything, but I did at least do uh, at least four of them going into uh, Thanksgiving. But one of the things I think we should put down here is uh, what we did to, uh, that Thursday night prior to that, because it lines up to what I was talking about, I have been talking about, talking about this Sunday, uh, was the fact we were talking about what does God say about you, right? Or who you are. And 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 then the, it kind of rises in the heel because that kind of goes a little bit on this too. Uh, is, is the subject I put down there and I, I'll put it back again. Uh, let me put it up here for you. It, it was talking about who gave you the license to cast the first stone? And it, it lines up with the subject we did we did Sunday uh, prior to Thanksgiving uh, was the fact is that when people create a narrative, the right narrative, it gives them the right justification to do bad things to people, to hurt people. And I, and I, I think it's better to ride that right into it because then you understand that you don't, don't let people uh, don't accept the narrative people give you. Because even though here we're talking about the law, well, the fact is that if you cast a stone, you, you, uh, if you throw a stone, somebody they basically kill them. In this modern day time, not only they shoot you, but also they try to do character assassination as well. And all because they pay the narratives that makes it acceptable to do those things. And I think we need to get into uh, understanding we don't allow those narratives to be to kill us individually or collectively. Don't don't accept the narrative of other people. Uh, because that's the problem is that the narrative they set for you, it also applies to them, but they're not executing that judgment on themselves. And that's why I wanted to show it to you. I thought it was important to do this one. And maybe we can put this out as uh, Sunday as well. This Sunday. I mean <laughs> this Sunday today. Amen. God bless Sunday before Thanksgiving. So, so what I'm gonna do is go into uh, that, that subject and, and check it out because it, it lines up with what we talked about, uh, the, all the sessions that you're gonna hear throughout the week concerning what does God say about you, right? Or who you are. And then I'm saying is this is a clear example of when people put a narrative on you, then they want bad things to happen to you. And they feel justified, but even they themselves have their own weaknesses and their own shortfalls. And therefore, you got to watch out for that. Amen. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's go into it. And, 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 and check, I mean, let's learn to be real. Amen. Let's learn to be real. You know, I, uh, I do want to sit there and say, and like I say, here's the title, Who Gave You the License to Cast the First Stone? And like I said, there's people that can shoot you, throw a stone at you, do something to do bother harm to you. And then some try to do harm to you uh, by your reputation. And you gotta, and I'm trying to say, don't accept narratives and watch out for these narratives that people try to put on you because they're trying to discredit you and make the reflection towards you instead of themselves. And that's, that's the big key to it is most narratives, negative about somebody is only trying to draw you draw you away from them or try to draw other people away from their their own narrative and i think you gotta watch out for it right amen so we say making sense and understanding god's word nehemiah 8 8 and, and so they read in the book in the law of god distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading and and that's what we do in our studies is let the word of god give sense to the word of god and, and then do a comparison of what that does in our own day and time, amen? So we're going to go into the, uh, the next slide here. Uh, <laughs> we're put down here in uh, Proverbs 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven out of abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hand that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imagination, Feet to be swift and run into mischief. A false witness speaks lies, and he that sows discord among the brethren. 
And that's what I think when you talk about reputations and going out to people's characters, character assassinations, or even picking up a stone and trying to hurt somebody, shoot somebody. It's all showing discord among the brethren. And even our country, we got to <clears throat> get past this, I, I hate you. I'm gonna call you a communist. I'm gonna call you a fascist. You know what I mean? All this stuff. Well, all we're doing is creating narrative to justify our bad behavior toward one another. And all they're gonna do is bring about destruction. And we need to watch out for that junk. Amen? But look at a good example about somebody trying to create a narrative that 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 allows people to justify bad actions. This is John 8, starting in verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning came again unto the temple. And all the people came unto him and sat down and taught them. And, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, meaning in the middle of everybody, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in the adultery in the very act. And everybody always asked the question, where the man at? Now Moses, the law commanded us, look, here's the license they're trying to say. The law of Moses commanded us, there's their license, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? You know, further all, if she both have been stoned, why you ain't stoned her? Why are you going to run all the way up to the temple from the city? I assume she was in a home or somebody's home or somewhere in the back in the booth in the corner in the dark, and they pulled her. They took her all the way to the temple instead of stoning her, because that was the law. They got a license to stone her. But they wanted to see what Jesus had to say. That's very interesting in itself, right? Verse 6. <laughs> This they said, tempting him, because that's what they wanted. That's why they did all that. Running all the way up to the temple to tempt Jesus, test him, right? See if he's going to do something contrary to the word of God. That they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, rolled on the ground, as though he heard them not. And that's something for you. Hey, let me come off of this for a second. That that's something some of y'all need to get into is understanding. Stop sitting there and listen to gossip. If first of all, hey, a if you ain't nothing to do with it, it don't apply to you, doesn't affect you. If somebody comes running you about some doggone gossip, you need to go ahead and do just like Jesus and act like I ain't hear you. Because what you want me to do about it? Since I, I won't there, don't know about it, ain't gonna do nothing about it. All you want to do is sit there and talk about somebody, kill their reputation, and and, and then do per, you know character assassinations. And then they find out that's what you needed in order for you to do bad things to them. God said, I ain't got time for that. Just think about that. You know, say Christ was, we're Christian, we'll be Christ like. <clears throat> Why don't we just do that, right? Let's do what Christ said, amen? Let's go back to it. Hi, glory to God. Man, God's word is rich if you sit there and take time to get into it. So then look at it. You heard him not, verse 7. And when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. He said, If you ain't never sinned, if you ain't never sinned, he said, He without sin. See, I said, then tell you that most people probably sinned two minutes ago. Some people sinned a week ago. Some people sinned a day ago. Some people sinned now. But he said, He without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. First cast a stone at her. All y'all got stones. All y'all want to go stone this woman. Well, let, let he who has never sinned be the first one to execute judgment. And again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And when they heard, and, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they won't listen to the conscience at first, but convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one beginning at the elders, but he got the most malice in him, right? <laughs> he knows, he's been living for a long time. He know he is sin, right? Even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And the next one, when Jesus lifted himself up, he saw none but the woman. And said unto the woman, where is those, where are those thy accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Look, and I want you to understand this too. Let me come off this for a second. Look, he says, has no man condemned you? 
Why are you sitting there condemning yourself? Because you're a person too. You're a man too. You're a person, a woman, whatever you are. That woman, he said, where are your accusers? Nobody accused you. Why did they accuse you? Because they were convicted by their own sin and transgressions themselves. So therefore, I'm trying to say, you stop sitting there trying to allow yourself to be put down because somebody else trying to put you down because they also convicted. All the sin that comes short of the glory of God. I'm not sitting there saying they don't want to tell you if you have all, but I'm sitting there telling you don't sit there and condemn yourself. Get up and go and sin no more. Work on it. Work on it because you're a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. They are work in progress. Stop allowing people to put you in a box and try to tell you that this is who you are. No, I'm a child of God. Somebody wants to sit there and say, well, you, you, you use the N-word. But no, no, I'm a child of God. Someone said to say, you're, you're a cracker. No, I'm a word. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I am not what you call me to be. I am not a negative description. I am not dumb. I'm not stupid. I'm not evil. I'm not mean. I'm not hateful. I am a child of God. And as a child of God, I love you and have mercy towards you because I got mercy was given to me. And that's how we need to walk in the things of God's will, not in the will of man, not in people that sit there and get envy and hate and hate, hate and all that other stuff. And that happened, I'm telling you, it happens Black people, white people, all y'all got there and you, you get angry with somebody because you don't like what they're doing, opposed to sitting there saying, this, man, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to be an example of myself. And I'm going to have the grace toward you because I got the grace toward me. Amen? So let's continue on with this. Ooh, hallelujah. Man, I get me stirred up. Don't get me stirred up in this stuff. I mean, sitting there and the doctor, turn the, <laughs> turn the uh, computer over. <laughs> He said, woman, where are those thy accusers? Has no man condemned thee? And she said, no man, Lord. And look, the person who put the stone, thrown the stone was Jesus himself. You want to come off the screen and tell you that? The person who was out sin was Jesus Christ standing next to her, asking where are your accusers, telling the crowd before they all scattered and convicted their own hearts, where are your accusers? Because he said he was out saying them cat the first stone, where everybody left because they were convicted in their hearts. But he who was out sin was there. But you didn't see him pick up a stone. You didn't see him go, join the crowd when they sit there and say, oh, this woman is caught in an act of adultery. Let's pick up some stones. Let's be to go ahead and execute her. You didn't see him do that. He that was out sin. See, there's only people who with sin that want to do bad things. Convict your own heart. Take your own look at yourself. But also, don't convict yourself either. Because, no, you, 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 you know, but just look at the fact of why it's so important to be with the gospel, because Jesus sit there and, and, and said, woman, look at this. This is the last verse on that. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. I got the right to condemn you, but I don't. See, sinners, past transgressors, people of sin, they, they, they gonna, they'll condemn you, even though they've been condemned themselves. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He ain't telling her, I'm going to endorse what you did wrong. He said, go and sin no more. But I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to stone you. That's why we got to learn to love one another. That's how the same scriptures do it right here. You see it in John 13, 34. New commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. See, he has loved the people who condemn you. He loved them. He loved all of us the same way. He has no respect of person. So, Love one another as I love you also love one another. He even said it, by this y'all may know that you are my disciple if you have love for one another, amen? So just look at that, man. This is this, this, this narrative of negative narrative. Drop it. Just drop it. Stop sitting there and just don't receive it anyway. Stop trying to condemn other people and stop trying to condemn yourself. Jesus ain't in condemning. He came to save the world. You too, man.
God bless you. Hey, have a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you do. And I know we'll be back. Hey, hallelujah. To worship the Lord and give a praise of glory. Amen. Tell them, Mom. Amen. <laughs> again sister have a happy thanksgiving uh god is good all the time especially right now and i'm just saying don't go don't even condemn yourself for the fact you've condemned people i have to you know and uh i repent it's not about trying to keep people in condemnation it doesn't matter like i said color skin it doesn't matter anything they do i know you all are looking for well what about this no it's everybody. He died for everybody. So everybody can come to Christ and 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 encourage them to conform. And see, I think that's what you need to remember. <laughs> it's about conforming to the image. See, we forget about the fact is that we worry about what they're doing and what they did, opposed to what they're supposed to be conforming to and forgetting who does the conforming. See, we try to conform people, it don't matter. But when he give him the time you just give the word and you preach and encourage but he does the conforming and the whole purpose is every last one of us will be conforming will conform to him and his son amen that's how i'm just trying to say believe in god and the power of god if he can change you he can change somebody else too that you don't like amen or even people you do like he can change them to conform his image god bless you have a great happy thanksgiving bye-bye <laughs>